In a game as versatile as Fortnite, having a playstyle that complements your skill set is super important. But most of us have a problem. Our playstyles are all over the place, and we don't focus on the skills that we're good at. I'm Cody, and for today's video, we're looking at how to find a playstyle that works for you. We'll look at pro player examples, have a discussion on team modes, and find the areas you should focus on. Let's get into it. All right, so there are a few ways to be successful in Fortnite. You can be an excellent fighter, someone who excels at making it to the end game, or maybe you're somewhere in between. Wherever you fit, the point we're getting at is that to determine your playstyle, you need to play to your strengths. Let's say you are absolutely bananas at fighting. You have spent a bunch of hours 1v1ing in creative and perfecting your builds and edits, so you have no problem beating most players you come across. Well, in that case, how's that going to impact the way you play? We're sort of describing NRG Clicks right now, so let's just analyze him to find out. When Clicks is in a tournament, he's not the type to back down from a fight. He actually chooses drop spots with enough loot to attract at least a few other players because he knows that with his experience, these guys typically won't get in his way. They're just more of uh, loot gatherers. Same thing during mid game. Someone with a passive playstyle would typically avoid mid game fights because of the risks involved. But Clix is very knowledgeable about things like peace control, box exploits, and just everything there is to know about ending fights quickly. So he uses his strong suit there to be a bit more aggressive than most players. So essentially, Clix doesn't play passively or wait for perfect opportunities to be presented. He acts aggressively, asserts dominance, and creates his own opportunities. And who knows why he's like that. Maybe Clix just had fun playing aggressively when he started out, so he naturally got good at it. That's usually how strength develops. But in contrast to Clix, let's look at FaZe Bizzle now. Bizzle's a player mainly known for his game sense and rotational knowledge. He almost never messes up a tunnel and is insane at finding innovative ways to move about in the endgame. But by modern pro standards, Bizzle's not really considered that great of a fighter. Regardless, Bizzle's found a ton of success throughout the year, like getting second place at DreamHack Anaheim as well as in the FNCS semifinals. Because from the moment he drops off the bus, he has a route in mind to avoid fights during the early and mid games so that he can more consistently make it to the end. And then that's why he has no problem using his rotations to rack up easy points. And we're sure a lot of you guys are wondering about trios, since that's the primary format for FNCS now. Well, playstyle dynamics get kind of complicated in team modes, but for the most part, you can choose teammates with similar playstyles so that the team's more on the same page, or different playstyles which can lead to a more cohesive team. I mean, let's look at Clicks again. In his case, he's partnered with Riverson and Day. Riverson fills the IGL role, while Day and Clicks mostly act as fraggers. And with a team like this, Clix and Day can focus on what they're good at while Riverson calls the shots. All in all, having a variety of playstyles creates a more balanced team, which is why most trios tend to go with a mixed bag. Also, on a side note, the tournament format also plays a part in your playstyle. Some formats favor placement points more than others, which makes players a bit more passive, while others give a lot of elimination points, which creates the first game playstyle that's just W keying. Not all of us are going to be capable of pulling off 20 kill wins in the first game, but if you're at least decently talented, it's always better to play a bit more aggressively in your first match of an event. So you find your strong points and play to them. That's the idea behind choosing a playstyle. There's a bit more to it that we'll get to later, but don't think that the only two ways you can be good are being a good fighter or having good game sense. There are plenty of variations and in-between playstyles. That's why when deciding on one, you have to consider even seemingly minor strengths. For example, someone who takes pride in their close range aim could be like, yeah, I should take more 50-50 fights. I should jump into boxes more often. I'll probably win them because my aim is so good. Pretty much every small factor plays a role, so to find your playstyle, it's going to take a lot of hard thinking about what you're really good at, so you can play it. But look, if you need help figuring out what your strengths are, definitely, definitely, definitely talk with one of our coaches. They've been through it all, so they know all there is to know about playstyles. And plus, they can help you with any other areas you're struggling with. So check our coaching out today with the link at the top or in the description. But back to the action. 
All right, so we've established that playing to your strengths is what you gotta do to find the right play style. Still, that doesn't mean you should always ignore your weaknesses. Like, let's say you've decided that your mechanics aren't good enough for W King. You try and try, but can't find success, so you eventually decide you're more of a passive player. That's totally fine, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't practice playing an aggressive game or two, because if you never do, your fighting skills won't improve right? They'll just stagnate and end up worse and worse. And as all the players around you get better, you're going to go down into the dumps. And the same could happen on the opposite end. If all you do is mindlessly W key every player you lay your eyes on, you'll improve as a fighter, sure, but you'll miss out on valuable end game experience. You might also develop bad habits where you don't think about the fights you're taking, and that mentality could lead to severe issues when it comes to placing well in tournaments. What it comes down to essentially is that knowing multiple playstyles is sort of a requirement if you want to be successful in today's Fortnite. That's why it is so important to dedicate time to practicing areas that just don't come to you so naturally. A great example of the importance of that is Chap. Chap's an OG who's accomplished so much since the beginning of pro play, and he's a bit of a game sense genius. But if there's one area he struggles with, it's mechanics. His building, editing, and aim, while not horrible or anything, just haven't been able to keep up with the fast-paced action of today's pro scene. Still, it's not like Chapstick just accepts his faults for what they are. Instead, he dedicates time to improving them. He sets a routine of 1v1s and Raider's Peace Control map so that he can become a better mechanical player. And that's what every player who finds himself lacking mechanical skills should be doing practicing and creative, and even the occasional W key game. And if you maybe struggle with decision making and want to improve in that area, that's when you should be VOD reviewing. VOD reviews are incredibly useful when you're struggling to identify what you do poorly. Sometimes you won't have a clue what went wrong, but after watching the replay a few times, you can end up with a much more comprehensive view of your mistakes. But essentially, we're trying to say that if you spend zero time practicing in the areas you suck at, the player base will get better and you'll eventually be left behind in the dust. So yes, dedicate some time to improving your faults. About 20 or 30% of your game time and you'll set yourself up to become a much better player in the long run. All right, now lastly, I wanna talk about one more way to refine your playstyle, and that's to mimic what the pros do. Fortnite has a ton of pro players, which is great because it means you can always find someone with a similar playstyle you can learn from. For instance, if you were a low ping player who took pride in your mechanical skills, you could watch someone like FaZe Martaz, who uses lots of peace control, confusing build moves, and extremely swift edits to his advantage. But let's say your ping isn't very good, which honestly, you do have to worry about. Ping plays a massive role in defining your playstyle, and the higher it is, the slower paced you'll have to be. But in that case, you can look at a pro like G2 Jelty. He likes to land at pretty low key spots, avoid fights and tournaments, and when it's time to scrap, we can see he prefers high ground, taking lots of jump shots and baiting out edits, since those tactics tend to not rely on ping as much. Alrighty guys, to summarize everything, finding your playstyle is all about your strengths and weaknesses. They could be fighting, rotations, getting endgame kills, landings, aiming, peace control, you get the picture. If you don't know them right away, spend a few games experimenting with different styles until you start to understand. Then you need to find ways to play to your strengths and practice improving your weaknesses. Time management is essential here, so we'd say conform to your strengths about 70% of the time, and use the other 30% as practice time in creative or arena to work on your faults. And lastly, pro players can be a huge inspiration, so look towards pros with similar talents, setups, ping, and so on, to see what practice choices you can start using yourself. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully it helped you find a bit more information about finding that playstyle that fits your strengths. Remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with the bell on so you don't miss a video. We are only 50K away from 1 million subs. That is right, 5-0K, 50K. If you wanna see that story of video for the legend Keith Allen, share this video with all your friends. Anyway, hope you have an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one.